Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at smart to play You can go to smart to play.com slash FRD for a free offer where they can help you manage your Windows computers faster and easier. smart to playcom slash FRD. We were just talking about how much we love PowerPoint. <laughs> it was a short conversation. It was a very short conversation. <clears throat> very yeah, it's succulent. Not as bad as other apps. Um like Outlook.com. I, I know I tweeted. We were chatting about this on the, on the Twitters yesterday. Log into Outlook.com. The blue ribbon up there. Microsoft, God love them. They couldn't just yeah. leave an empty an empty potential know, spot for visual clarity and cleanliness. Nope. It now has like the Teams icon up there. It has a diamond, which that is just a mystery box of fun. Um, but it's actually subscriptions. <laughs> then you have OneNote. You have just other stuff. And it just... As I, it, as I joke, it's only a matter of time before it's just full of Teams icons, yeah. you know? It's just, I'm surprised Yammer's not it. Like, Xbox Game Pass. Like, it's, it just seems like every time I log in, they just add one more, just, just to see if you notice. And then it's by the time you, you know, 2025, you're going to get all the way over to the search bar. And it's just going to be icons just all across. So. I'm wet, bro. What? Wet. Yeah. I, uh, so. I understand I, why this wasn't in the news. Um, so it's funny. Soon. I think it's my fault that you're all wet, but I'm, I'm very happy. It, uh, it it turned out this way. So as you remember, Paul, I may have mentioned a few times that I dug a uh, drainage ditch in my backyard, put in some stuff, whatever. So yesterday, because we got, we legitimately had like uh, warnings, like potential flash flood because of all this rain that was going to hit. So where all of the, the drainage daylights, I dug it out just a little bit, just to make sure it's clear, just so I didn't have to go out there potentially in the storm. You know how much rain we got, Paul? And I can tell you to the exact 10th, thanks to my handy dandy weather station. Well, I'm guessing it was some tenth of an inch. Yeah, it was point one one of an inch, so eleventh of an inch, and that was it. Eleven one hundredths of an inch. Yeah, eleven. Yes, I mean, just it, so, it rains harder on a random Tuesday than from what we were expected to get. Well, we walked the dog this morning, and it was sprinkling wonderfully. And as I said to my wife after this incredibly hot summer, this is so wonderful to walk in this weather. <laughs> and then about. A third of the way into the walk, it just deluged for the rest of the way home, and the dog, <laughs> the dog kept looking back at us like, "Are we are we gonna keep going? We're we gonna keep okay." Like she had to shake herself off because she just got her haircut too, so it must be worse on her skin or whatever. But that dog stopped and shook herself like twenty times to no avail on this on this walk. But it's gonna be a wet one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need it. It's okay. They should have called it the the rain potatoes. Okay. Because the hurricane was named Ida. Ida Yikes. I, Idaho. Wow. Potato. I don't think that's how it works. I, uh, <laughs> I'm it's, not an expert in this kind It of sounded thing. really good in my head. I, uh, I like that they've had adding uh, men's names to the list is new, right? Like, uh, did it always used to be women? And then it was like, this seems kind of sexist. Like, uh, right? Though we have, we have men's hurricane names now, I think. I mean, they've had hurricane, I, I guess. No, right. they've had men heard. Can't, I guess Andrew, right? Real. Oh, that's no. You're right. You are right. Okay, I'm sorry. Did they add women's names to it? Gloria, no. Katrina. Katrina. You remember no, that I, little I, guy? That what, little girl. What names did they? They had like dog names. Like here comes Sparky. Like, <laughs> I guess it's always been. I I don't know. For some reason, I have my. I'm so old. I probably am remembering something from the 1980s. I don't know. <laughs> just, they also have Matt and Color together, now. Paul Ferrat, um, wireless yeah, TV. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, well, well. Here we are. Um, so there's a lot going on today, Brad. If you there can is, do that. there's widgets, which I saw you did a few. I, I'm, I'm sorely disappointed with what these widgets have become in in Windows 11 because. Uh, well, listen, I I, I, I yeah. need to know that a celebrity tried on a daring bathing suit and um, you know looks good or feels good about herself or whatever it is. <laughs> so I don't know what you're complaining about. Um, it's a weird melange of like sports, stocks, bikinis. I, I don't know. I remember years and years ago, and this is probably back uh, when MSN was still an ongoing brand mm -hmm. for all of their internet stuff or Windows Live maybe was just happening, but there was a big bing push. And one of the things that Microsoft did, being a logical company, is they look at the market leader, Google, and they say, well, what? how can we improve on what they're doing? 
And one of the things they had from their metrics was, you know, people search for celebrity news a lot. We're going to focus on that. And for like a nine month period or something, Bing was the place to go if you wanted to find out about Alyssa Milano or whoever was big back in this time period. I don't even know who that is. They're good. <laughs> She's nobody. But it's it, it to me that was just like just like a nonsense focus, a stupid, you know, just but anyway, it's amazing to me that you can bring up widgets today and see that non you know, that stuff again. You know, it just never stops. Leah Michael, I just did it. Leah Michelle poses on the beach in a bikini. And by the way, it doesn't matter how many times I say hide stories from this place. These kinds of stories are so big to MSN that they just keep coming up. Mm -hmm. You know? So I don't know. I just, but here's the good news. If you compare news and interest, which is mm -hmm. this interface in Windows 10, to widgets in Windows 11, the one difference, at least on the screens I've been looking at, is that the the beginning, of the top of it, the above the fold bit, if you will, consists of things that are not nonsense, right? Weather, stocks, which I don't really care about, my photos, which is, you know, okay. And then for some reason, Major League Baseball, I guess at one point, 17 years ago, I told them I like baseball. Sports, we'll call it sports. And that's, that's above the fold. There's no bikini pictures. There's no, you know, chip gains and whatever his wife's name or doing whatever they're doing. There's none of that. And that's good. Mm -hmm. But man, you don't have to scroll too far. Nope. Well, the biggest flaunts sculpt, sculpted abs and legs in a crop. Seriously, like, what the? Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm the just... biggest disappointment here is in the most Microsoft way possible. There should be an API for this thing. Like people should be able to be building. Like for example, well, I would get a lot more use out of this if I could open it up. It would have like system tray or, or not system tray. Uh, what is it when you when you look at all oh, your your computers on um, control out delete task manager. Could have that stuff in there, That's like, okay. like if, if yes. you could open it up and like see system stats, so like storage, like effectively making it sort of like rain meter, but in here. But then the fact that you can't even drag these things to the desktop, which is where Widget World should live, in my my opinion, is that you should be able to put these things on the desktop because that would be helpful. But you sort of feel like I, I and oh well, no, you don't have to. Actually, I'm not making this up. They were going to go in this direction. Like if you're familiar with them. Um, Chrome OS, one of the things you might realize or not know is that you can't put stuff on the desktop. The desktop is just a, it's a picture. That's all it yep. is. You can't, there's no desktop folder. You can't copy stuff to it or whatever. I use desktop as kind of a scratch space. I, articles I'm working on are there for now, and then I move them somewhere else when I'm done. I'm sure there are people who just use desktop, and their desktop's full of whatever. It's my wife, and but, it drives me nuts, but yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, my wife too, actually. So I don't like, the, you know, I'm a little more organized than that, but whatever. Uh, Windows 10X was going to be like Chrome OS. They weren't going to let you put stuff on the desktop, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And I, you have to think that's kind of the future. And if that's the future, I mean, other than the fact that depending on the screen, you might be covering up the entire desktop, you know, putting widgets on the desktop would make some sense. Maybe they could be collected over to the side in some kind of a pane, maybe mm, a side Some sort of gallery that you could maybe yeah, shop through could, and, and yeah, choose you, them. When you full screen, it would or would not cover it based on your the way you configure it. You know, it's just... Yeah, maybe when you take them out of this window, instead of calling them widget, you call them gadgets, maybe? Maybe, maybe, just to differentiate them somewhat, sure. Anyway, it's new technology, maybe Microsoft will get there. Um, <laughs> you realize we're closing in on that being 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Two, 2003 was the year they announced Longhorn. Was and it really? Yep, yep. And it briefly, people probably forget this, but after Longhorn kind of fell apart, mm -hmm. and they eventually did ship a sidebar of sorts in Vista, there was a version of that Longhorn sidebar they were going to make for XP. And I don't know if that ever came out, but that was, that I tested I have photos of it somewhere. Well, year did a, Vista ship? Um, was it? Where? When? It's 2005 or six. I think it was, I want to say it was six. Was, they had a trunk. So they did business November of whatever year, and then they did the consumer launch in this, you know, like early next year or whatever. Yeah, I was trying to remember because I, back in the day, Paul, as you would as you would call it, um, I used to build media center boxes, and <laughs> yeah. and I remember fighting Vista's media center. What were they with the Hoppage video cards or whatever that allowed you to plug your coax in dorm? This was in dorm rooms. Like I'm like Michael Dell, except I didn't become a billionaire. I was building media center boxes for friends in a college dorm room. And don't have COVID. I, I remember when Vista came out. I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna make 
I don't have to like tinker with too much stuff from media center. And it's like, it's already got a nice. And then I just remember being hell in a handbasket, trying to get everything yep. to work. Yeah. I mean, center was a wild ride. Yeah. There was a brief period there where you could do cable card and it was kind of full quality. Mm-hmm. Early days, man, it was well, you know, it was like 120 wires. And then the little IR blaster thing would pop off the front cause the glue wouldn't hold. And you'd be like, yep. why doesn't the work? And, if you need something of high quality, check out this message from our friends over at Smart Deploy. The modern workplace requires modern IT tools. When legacy solutions like Ghost, MDT, and Acronis Snap Deploy no longer fit the bill, try Smart Deploy's modern endpoint management solutions. Head on over to smartdeploy.com FRD to get started with your free exclusive software worth over $570. We are strapped. So, so I haven't written it <laughs> yet, but... Well, I've written some of it, but there's actually a lot of stuff happening this morning. Is there? Yep. South Korea passed that law. Oh, that's gonna right. Re- right, right, right. It's from third parties. Amazing. I have fears that they're going to work around that. Google, not surprisingly, is going to develop an ARM-based chipset for its laptops and tablets, right? They're doing it for their phones. That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. People <laughs> with non-compliant Windows 11 Oh, yeah. People- are being kicked out of the insider program. Hey, thanks for testing, everybody. See you later. Now, I thought that they said that... No, I don't know what this... I know. Maybe... I don't know. I have to... I, this, I haven't... That one I've not looked into yet. i got to figure out what's going on there. But yes, I, I also thought, you know... Um, Maybe but, they did. I can't remember. I remember them saying something about it for a while. But it's... What, what does it matter? I mean... Like, let me let me read you a sentence. This is about the Google Google versus South Korea thing, right? And I, just tell me if you can spot the lies in this. I'll, in fact, I'll just read you part of the sentence and and tell me tell me which lies you can spot in this sentence. Because this one is this one is prime miscommunity. No, uh, purposeful disinformation. It's amazing. Google Play. This is from Google. Provides far more than payment processing. And our service fee helps keep Android free. Say it with a straight face. Any problems? Uh, well, first off, we know Google's, we know Android's not free. Like, that is. Android's not free. It's there not. Is that you can get for free called Android Open Source Project, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Very few use because it doesn't come with what? Google Play. <laughs> that one. is a circle jerk of lies. <laughs> that is. That beginning to end, that is a lie. Yeah. We also just found out, by the way, that this uh, not just a processing system has margins of sixty-two percent and a profit of eight point five billion dollars. Well, decent. Well, suggesting that maybe they're overcharging. <laughs> right? That anyone who thinks that, well, you know, come on, they they put this whole infrastructure up, they're protecting apps and whatever nonsense you think they're doing because let's face it there are still all kinds of weird malware on both Mm -hmm. mobile platforms by the way uh no they're just reaping in the rewards and by the way the fee structure is beyond arbitrary because it was arbitrary when apple invented it and now google because they have to copy everything apple does just copied that they didn't look into it they didn't examine it they didn't think about what might be better for the environment or the ecosystem i guess um they just did what apple did so so there's some fun economic theory behind that, that pushes against Apple and Google's narrative. So mm-hmm. when Apple introduced the 30% rate, because they were first in the industry to do that, it was pretty mm-hmm. easy to justify. It's like, hey, new market and all that stuff. Now, the economic mm-hmm. theory would tell you that as more competitors enter the market, the price pricing floor should be pressed down. Like such right. as Google comes in, such as Microsoft yep. comes in. The fact that it has not budged since its initial introduction would allude to the it's fact that, that there's not enough uh, competition in the marketplace for something right. like this, which is see, people, sort of... people don't understand this kind of theory, Brad, because what they see is they, they see what's happening today. And they're like, I don't right. know what the problem is. There are a billion apps in the store. I get apps for free. Some of them have ads. Some of them I have to pay for, but the system seems to be working. What they don't understand is that there are apps that aren't coming to the store because of the belligerent behavior of these companies that, that will could change things for the world, as has happened in the past. The thing that stops innovation is monopoly, or in this case, duopoly. Um, and also, by the way, you know, there's there's a direct, the other thing is like, let's say this path, like let's say the whole world moves to third party in uh, payment systems, right? They'll be like, well, what's gonna change? I, I, we don't see this. Like 
I, I because again, I, I bore my wife to tears with this bullshit. Like I, I <laughs> stupidly described this stuff there. I said, for example, I said we go to the Trapdoor's restaurant, local restaurant, we really like. Right? Do we know what what payment system they're using on the back end? No, and we don't care. But it behooves them to find the one that charges them the less, the least, that is still mm-hmm. high quality, because that makes allows them to make more money. Them making more money, even if they don't lower their direct prices to us, which could be one of the outcomes, still benefits us as customers. Yeah. Because the quality of the service is higher. They can afford their, to pay their employees more. They can make more of a profit. They can offer new uh, you know, foods, or in this case, or whatever it is. They can experiment with things. They can do things differently. You, you don't... I, I, it, it, it amazes me that people who have no understanding of how this system works on the back end are arguing for Apple and Google. Like I... That that should never happen. The only people arguing against this should be Apple and Google. It doesn't. It, it's uh, the it's, other the other fun thing to re, to to consider. Amazing. Again, going back to a little economic. It's not even economic theory. It's like, I can prove it pretty easily. Yeah, I was going to say it's an, an well, economic let, reality. The the reality is is job growth comes from primarily small and medium sized businesses. If Apple right. were tomorrow to cut their percentage to 15%, so every app developer just got a 15% raise, I can promise you that will create more jobs and more employment opportunities right. than more Apple apps, putting... More services, more innovation. Exactly. More, that all benefits users directly. Yeah. All because of it. A question you can... A good question is to say, if X company had an extra million dollars, what happens? Apple? Absolutely nothing. Com- nothing. Joe making a weather mm-hmm. app that offers some fun features. He's going to hire another developer. He's going to hire another salesperson. Like that's yep. that's the no. It's uh, it, I, I, it's just it's so hard to argue for something that to people seems theoretical and it's not happening now. So I don't even know what you're talking about versus what's happening now. And uh, that unfortunately that that's something that comes up all the time in monopoly uh, antitrust law, you know, theory, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, it, it's, if you want to think of it in tech, technical terms, it's a little bit like the, um, the chromium thing. Like people argue, mm-hmm. well, oh, this is ruin the internet and blah, blah, blah. But there are, there are points where standards make sense and all that kind of thing. And, you know, you have to kind of balance this, but you need competition in any market and competition in the browser market, such as it is, comes from features not from like a low-level rendering system that nobody mm-hmm. should even know. Of. Um, in this case, Apple and Google are just reaping the w- rewards of their dominance. I and mean, that's all it is. And by the way, Apple's fees are in many cases over 10 times what other payment processing systems charge. Um, so, I, you know, 15% is cute, but how about 5%? Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, would Apple's services revenues drop in the short term because of this if they imp- imp- did this worldwide? Yeah, they would. They should. They make too much money. It's There is no reason for that much money to be pumped into one company for literally doing nothing. And I know people hate that phrase because, oh, they put up an infrastructure. Yeah, they did. It runs itself and it makes a huge profit. It's, I don't know. I, you, know what, you know what I hope happens? And this is only because the headlines would be fantastic. A purchase ballot screen. So you need to go in the a- Apple's app store and you click purchase and be like, do you want to buy this through Apple? Do you want to buy this through Walmart or whatever? Do you want to buy this through Paul Therat's app store? <laughs> that would be, so uh, again, this doesn't impact, this is not impacting. This is not you as a user having to go into your iPhone and configure a payment. This is, the developers do it on the back. It doesn't impact anything. You would mm-hmm. never see it. You would never see it. And that's the sad thing because if this happens, if it goes through and it's worldwide somehow and it's part of all the changes that need to happen with these platforms, you wouldn't understand that somewhere down the road, some new service that came out of nowhere, like a, a Zoom or a Teams or a, you know whatever the next big thing is, you wouldn't even know mm-hmm. that it was might have been because now Apple or at Google doesn't have a stranglehold on this stuff, and that that small developer could be a kid in Africa in South America somewhere, somewhere we've never heard of, someone we've never heard of, innovates and does something magical, but he could never afford to have done it otherwise. Um, if these payments were, weren't lowered. So anyway, I, I know it's, it'll be interesting to watch. My worry is they're going to work around it. Mm-hmm. 
going to it's it's not hard to imagine. First of all, they could say, well, fine, we'll just we'll only allow that in South Korea. So developers will have this onerous process they have to go through if they want to sell their apps in South Korea. Looks like they're going to have to blah, blah, blah. And then people just, you know, won't make apps for South Korea because they'll say, screw it, that market's too small. But again, I this is just a step. It's one of several items that need to change. Uh, it's only one. It's uh, we could argue it's the second substantive change that's occurred in the wake of regulate regulatory interest. The first one being that news from last summer where Apple and then Google, because again they just copy everything Apple does, is only charging fifteen percent on the first million dollars uh, well, until a developer makes over fifty or mm. over a million dollars. So um, that change never would have happened if it wasn't for antitrust. So even people who are a little leery of whatever you want to call it, big government or are fans of these companies and somehow just want them to get, make as much money as they can because I love them. I love them so much. Uh, are seeing a benefit to this, even though they don't realize it. And if you need another benefit for your workplace, head on over to Smart Deploy and a flexible IT solution for the modern workplace. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD and we'll be back here tomorrow. So what's today like? AB1? <laughs> Took me a second.